Hello, I'm Rafi Shalom. I'm a student of Shahar Moz, and I will present our paper, Inherent Vacuity for GR1 Specifications. First of all, what is GR1? GR1 is a fragment of LPL that allows efficient synthesis. Synthesis means that we have a specification and we ask the computer to create an implementation from it, if one exists. Here we can see that we have an environment and a system, and the environment has assertions which are called assumptions, and the system has assertions that are called guarantees. There can be three of each. Initial assertions are about, are about the initial state. Safety assertions are about transitions. And justice assertions are about things that happen an infinite number of times in an infinite run. So essentially, we have six types of elements in a G1 specification, three for the environment and three for the system. What is a vacuity? A vacuity is a redundant element of a specification and it may be unnecessary and indicate a problem in the specification. A classic example from a verification is, suppose we have a specification with a response pattern. The response pattern says that if P occurs, then eventually Q will occur as well. And suppose we have an implementation in which P never occurs. Then verification passes, but this is of course a problem and we want to detect it. However, in our paper, we are discussing inherent vacuity, which is something different. Note that the vacuity may appear in a specification regardless of any possible implementation. And indeed, in our case, we have only an implement a specification as an input, and we don't have an implementation because we are discussing synthesis. So what will be a vacuity in this case? For example, P occurs always and occurs an infinite number of time. Of course, the latter is redundant. Also, we can have tautologies, and we can also have a specification which is inconsistent or unsatisfiable. All of those are considered inherent vacuities. What about previous work? There is no previous work on inherent vacuity for GR1 specifications. However, there is prior work about inherent vacuity for LTL specifications, which is a parameterized classification of different kinds of inherent vacuities. The algorithm they, that they use there is not implemented and is known to be inefficient. Our approach is a pragmatic approach. We use the unique structure of GR1 and we use a domain specific algorithm that implements uh, checks for implications. This is the basic framework and we use it to enhance uh, to other inherent vacuities such as domain value vacuities unsatisfiability, etc. But we have to discuss an abstract syntax of a specification. Syntax is important in the context of inherent vacuity because, for example, if we have A and A, it is semantically equivalent to A. However, the latter contains vacuities, the former contains vacuities, and the latter does not. So, let us look at a specification. A specification has two modules, an environment module and a system module. A module is a triplet that has initials, transitions, and justices. But those are just the propositional parts of these elements. The actual elements, the ones that appear in the specification, are initials, globally the elements of T, and globally, finally, the elements of J. And we also have to discuss semantics, because uh, what exactly is a, an inherent vacuity? How can we define it? If we remove an element and the semantics of the specification remains exactly the same, then we say that an element is bogus. But in order to define this correctly, in order for this to have any meaning, we have to discuss the semantics, and in our case, we chose the semantics of the strict realizability formula of uh, GR1. This means that if we remove an element and the traces that satisfy the strict realizability formula of the specification remain exactly the same, then it is uh, defined as a vacuity. 
our approach is a pragmatic approach. We have six, six different types of vacuities that match the six different types of elements in a G1 specification. According to the type, if we take an element, then we define a frame set, which is a set of logical elements, and a consequent that represents the element. And if the conjunction of the elements of the premise set implies the consequent, then we detect the vacuity. And we uh, chose it carefully, and we proved that our choices mean that if uh, the implication holds, then we have a valid vacuity. There are many observations and uh, considerations about uh, how, we, how to choose this. We won't get into this because this is uh, complicated but we proved that, that our choices are valid and we also have a discussion of why we didn't uh, enlarge the premises. So here is the table of the definition. Here we see six types. Here are the elements as they appear in the specification. Those are the premise sets and those are the consequence. As you can see, some premise sets are large and some are rather small. And if the conjunction of the premise set implies n k y is a consequence, then we have a vacuity. Also, uh, it is rather easy to implement the implication in our case because it is reducible to generalized bookie. And we compute it symbolically using the unit. Here is the paper example. It is a lift controller, which appeared in previous papers. And our tool says that each of these three elements is a vacuity, and also this element is a vacuity. Actually, uh, in our case, those are system justices, and according to our definition, the premise set is all other elements in the specification. This is easily extensible to unsatisfiability. We want to discuss unsatisfiability because we don't want to detect vacuities in an unsatisfiable specification because uh, if uh, some elements are already unsatisfiable they may cause something to be vocus regardless of its content and we don't want that but unsatisfiability is an inherent vacuity in itself we simply define all the elements to be the premise set and the consequent to be false then the conjunction of all the elements in the, in the specification implies false LTL wise, then we detect unsatisfiability. And this is coherent with our framework. Also, we can discuss unreachable domain values. Suppose we look at the safety globally, a variable does not equal a value. Then, if we add this safety to a specification and it turns out that it is vocal according, according to our rules, we, we proclaim the value to be an unreachable domain value. For system variables, we add guarantees, and for, and, uh, for uh, uh, environment variables, we define assertions. Now about localization. We have a novel concept of a vacuity core. Suppose we computed a vacuity, and now we know that we have a vacuity, and we know that the premise set implies the consequent, but the premise set can be quite large. So we want to localize the, the, the cause of the vacuity. For this we say that if we have a subset of the premise set, which its conjunction implies the consequent, but not any strict subset of it, then it is a vacuity core, and we can easily compute one using the mean, which is a well-known algorithm, delta divided. However, we can have a trivial vacuity. The core may be empty. In this case, let us uh, look, we can have, uh, of course, a pathology, but it doesn't really have to be a pathology. Suppose we have such a safety, and one is a minimum value, value of the variable F. In this case, this is a trivial vacuity. So we first compute a, a trivial vacuity, which is usually very easy. And if it's not a trivial vacuity, we apply the mean and find the core. Now let us talk a bit about extensions. First of all, our framework is immediately extensible to unrealizable specifications because we chose the semantics of the strict realizability formula of uh, the specification. 
This preserves counter strategies, which means that if the if uh, the spiritualizability semantics doesn't change, then we don't change the, the counter strategies, which means that we don't make the specification more realizable or less realizable or change the reasons for unsatisfiability. So this is already applicable immediately. Also, we have similar support for specifications reducible to GR1. There are all kinds of constructs which are higher constructs, constructs which are not pure GR1, but are reducible to GR1. So things like non-binary variables, LPL patterns, additional operators, all of them are reducible to GR1 and we support all of them seamlessly. Let us now see how this is implemented in practice. Suppose we have this specification and we first look for satisfiability because we don't want to find vacuities in an unsatisfiable specification. Our tool tells us that this specification is not satisfiable and it also provides a core. Unsatisfiability is a vacuity just like, like any other. So in, line, in these lines, we can find the core of unsatisfiability. Also, this is the example of our paper that we, we've seen before. And we can look for system uh, vacuities, and we can see that those are the vacuities. And we also have the cores. So uh, we can see that uh, that one, for example, has a core of size three. And as we said, all of these have a core which is uh, have uh, vacuities. Lastly, we can look at this specification. First of all, we check if it is unsatisfiable and it is satisfiable. Then we can look for vacuities. The system model vacuities, uh, for this the computer would work for a while and then it says that we have three different vacuities and it highlights the vacuities. Here we can see a safety and here we can see a response pattern. As you can see, even though this is reduced by several elements, is considered just one element and this is how the engineer sees it. We also have cores and as you can see here we have an empty core for this safety and indeed this variable it has a maximum value of five and this represents five which means that this is uh, this is unnecessary this is redundant the student that wrote that specification said that we don't count over the limit and if he had our tool, he would know that this is trivial and redundant. Also, we can look for domain value vacuities. And here we can see that this variable spec alignment states cannot be, cannot have the value alignment failure. And we also have a core, which is at line 156. And then if we look for it, we can see that we have here a safety, safety guarantee, which states that we cannot have this value. So this, this would help the engineer to understand what's going on. Also, we can see that our specification is unrealizable. And as we said, this is not a problem and our uh, implementation is useful also uh, for unrealizable specifications just as well. Finally, let us look at the evaluation. We have four research questions. One about the frequency, how frequent uh, vacuities are in specifications. Another about uh, computing them efficiently. The third is about localization. And the fourth is about controller synthesis time. In, in, in the context of if we remove a vacuity, how does it affect controller synthesis time? We have a corpus of Syntec specifications. Syntec specifications are autonomous Lego robots written by third year undergraduate computer science students. They contain non-Boolean variables and extensions and they're written by non-experts, so they're interesting. We took from Syntec 15 and Syntec 17 both realizable specifications and unrealizable specifications. So here we have four sets of specifications with well over 100 specifications.
We also have the well-known AMBA and GENBA specifications from the literature. These are written by experts and are pure GR1 with no uh, extensions. Here we can see that we have four sizes of each and we also have realizable and unrealizable specifications. The setup is that we implemented all of this in, spec in a Spectra synthesizer. We used an ordinary PC with a single core and we used CUDD3 for symbolic BDD computations. We took an average of 10 runs for the running times because uh, BDD uh, implementations have randomness. Now let's see how we answer the questions. For the first questions, we can, question, we can see that we have four specification sets of syntax. Under S, we have the number of specifications in each set. Under H, we have the specifications that have at least one vacuity. And as we can see, over 82% of the specifications have at least one vacuity. So they are frequent. Under v we have unsatisfiable specifications, and we have some. Here we have the six basic uh, types of vacuities. As we can see, justices, both of the environment and of the system, are very frequent. And also we have uh, the main value vacuities, those of the system are frequent. So those, those are the frequent ones. Also for AMBA and GEMBA, first of all, they are always satisfiable and there are no domain value vacuities, which is expected because all the variables are Boolean. But we, even though these were written by experts, we did find vacuities of type safeties of system and justices of the system. Now let's answer the second question about uh, how quickly we can detect these vacuities. So here we can see that for each of the four sets of syntax, we have two columns. One column is about detecting satisfiability or unsatisfiability. And the other is about detecting all vacuities in a satisfiable specification. Here we can see, for example, that the time limits are up to 0 0.1 second, 1 second, 10 second, 100 seconds, and so forth. And uh, the results are that for SYNC 15 specifications, within 10 seconds, we, can, we compute both satisfiability and both all vacuities. Also, for syntax 17, within 100 seconds, we compute satisfiability for all vacuities and all vacuities for a 98% and 91% of the specifications, respectively. To answer a localization effectiveness, we have the four sets of syntax. As you can see, we have trivial vacuities, and the core sizes are uh, usually one or two. So they are usually very small, even though we have V cores of over five also. Here's the reduction ratio. The reduction ratio is the ratio between the, the size of the core and the size of the premises. As you can see, the core is almost always uh, half as uh, big as the premises or smaller. And in most cases, it, it is even smaller than an eighth of the premises. So we uh, localize effectively. Also, we localize efficiently. Here we can see how much time it takes to compute a single core. Also with these bounds. So for example, for syntax 17 realizable, most of the cores we compute take uh, 0 0.1 seconds or less. So the results are that core computations takes less second, 10 seconds or less for all syntax 15 vacuities. Also for syntax 17, it takes less than 100 seconds for all vacuities except one. Lastly, we want to discuss synthesis running time reduction. Suppose we have a specification and now we remove a vacuity we want to see how it impacts synthesis running time. And here we take the, realizability, the realizable specifications for syntax 15 and syntax 17, but we take only those which are 0 0.1 seconds or higher to avoid volatility. 
There are 54 of those for Syndex 15 and 322 for Syndex 17. The one, here are the six basic vacuities. And uh, if we have this, we can see that uh, there are none which took more than 0.1 seconds. As we can see for justices, environment justices, the reduction time, the median reduction time is uh, 7%. And for system justices, it is over 25%. The rest had no change or very minor change. So this concludes our talk about inherent vacuity for GO1 specifications. We hope you enjoyed our talk and thank you for listening.